Interest in natokinase supplements is surging based on a recent human study of over 1,000 people showing a significant reduction in blood vessel blockages by up to 95.4%. The stakes are high. Heart disease still accounts for 32% of all global deaths, deaths that can and should be prevented. And I know what you're thinking because I was thinking the same. Every few months there's a new headline about a supplement that's the cure for heart disease. So is natokinase any different like omega-3 supplements or is it a dud? Particularly if it's paired with another supplement called seropeptase. Well, what I found looking at studies on clots, blood viscosity and mobility and this new study shocked me. But before getting into the weeds of the study, let's back it up a second. Natokinase is the active ingredient from natto, a traditional Japanese food made from fermented soybeans. It's also a fantastic source of protein and vitamin K2. Natto consumption is believed to be a significant contributor to the longevity of the Japanese population, and a high intake of natto is associated with a decreased risk of total heart disease. It's thought to break down the blockages or plaque in our blood vessels, thereby preventing heart attacks and strokes. And there is some evidence for this. In a single cell study looking at red blood cells, natto kinase decreased the clumping or aggregation of those red blood cells and overall decreased viscosity. In mice, it stopped the blood vessel walls from thickening when compared to the control group. And moving to the human studies, in 2003 a trial looked at whether natokinase could prevent clots from long-haul flights. So one of the big risk factors when you go on a flight is developing a clot in the legs or the lungs. This small study of natokinase did find a decrease in clotting events. To further back that up, a small study in 2009 showed that natokinase supplements decreased clotting factors in the blood. But the excitement kicked into overdrive during August of last year 2022 when a new study of over 1,000 patients showed a significant decrease in blood vessel blockages. The paper is titled Effective Management of Atherosclerosis Progress and Hyperlipidemia with Natokinase, a clinical study with 1,062 participants. Multiple YouTube channels at the time covered this paper, including this popular video. So let's go through the study ourselves and see what's what. Then we'll have a look at seropeptase supplements and whether that can also be added to natokinase. And finally, combine everything together from the latest preventative care guidelines to virtually guarantee that you'll never have a heart attack. So this study that generated all of that excitement is a retrospective study of 1,062 participants who received natokinase supplements for 12 months. So that's a really crucial point. It's a retrospective study. So what the authors did is scan medical records looking for anyone that's got existing disease in their blood vessels and who newly started natokinase supplements. That's a big difference between randomized controlled trials. So a randomized controlled trial is where one group would take the natokinase and the other group would take the placebo and you follow both groups up to see the true effect of natokinase supplements. So we can still glean fantastic information from retrospective studies so long as the analysis is done correctly but it's not as robust as a random randomized controlled trial. To be included in the study, participants needed to have marginal or mild hyperlipidemia, so high cholesterol blood levels, and or evidence of mild atherosclerosis or blockages in their blood vessels. So I really like this, it's examining a diseased population. Remember we're trying to figure out if natokinase supplements will reverse existing blood vessel blockages. Participants were recommended to take natokinase as an alternative health treatment in an attempt to improve their cardiovascular health conditions or who voluntarily took natokinase as a health supplement to improve or maintain their cardiovascular health. That's important as well. The participants, they had to have newly started natokinase. They couldn't have been on natokinase before the study began. To be included in the trial, the participants had to have high levels of blood cholesterol levels and ultrasound reports on the carotid artery, which is in the neck, looking for atherosclerosis. For most participants, the dose used in the study was 10,800 fibrinolytic units, which is quite a high dose. The normal dose of natokinase supplements is around 2,000 units. Let's now jump to the results. After 12 months of natokinase supplements, a significant reduction in cholesterol levels was seen compared to before treatment started. But before we get too excited about those results, there's a massive problem. We don't know what the participants were doing in addition to the natokinase supplements. Had they started other cholesterol-lowering medications? What other lifestyle changes had they made? Are they on blood pressure medications? How do we know that it's the natokinase supplements which are improving the blood cholesterol levels? And the short answer is, we don't. 
It's the same for the result showing that the size of the blood vessel plaque decreased by up to 36%. We don't know whether that's because of the natokinase supplement or because of all the other changes that these participants may have made. This study finishes by concluding that our data from this large clinical study suggests that natokinase supplements is significantly effective in the management of atherosclerosis progression and hyperlipidemia. When I first read this study, I was shocked. Is this what all of the fuss is about? A retrospective study that's got incomplete information, possibly riddled with bias, and no adequate comparison group? Well, luckily for us, there is another important natokinase trial. Then we'll have a look at seropeptide supplements and how to virtually guarantee that you'll never have a heart attack. A natokinase trial published in 2021 was a double-blinded trial involving 265 individuals who either took natokinase at 2,000 units or a matching placebo. The primary outcome was the rate of change in blood vessel blockages as measured by carotid ultrasounds, which is exactly the same compared to the previous study we looked at. However, this trial ran for three years and is a randomized controlled trial, not like the previous retrospective study, which only ran for one year. When we have a look at the results, after three years of treatment, there was no change in blood vessel blockages between the natokinase group and placebo. Additionally, there was no effect on blood pressure or other blood markers. That trial is the latest, largest, and longest duration randomized controlled trial on natokinase supplements that I could find, and there was no benefit seen. Now, the criticism for that trial was that it used a lower dose of 2,000 units, so it would be interesting to repeat that study at the higher 10,000 unit dose to see if there was any effect. But as of right now, there's no evidence from randomized controlled trials showing that we can reduce blood vessel blockages using natokinase supplements. But I want to be absolutely clear, the food natto can absolutely be part of a healthy diet. It's a fantastic source of protein, fiber, and vitamins, including vitamin K2. So less emphasis on supplements, please, and more emphasis on a whole food diet. Now let's have a look at seropeptase. It's thought to have anti-inflammatory and fibrinolytic effects. But to cut to the chase, there have been negative and controversial results, as well as some reports of mild to moderate side effects that cannot be overlooked. Therefore, more research is needed to confirm whether there's therapeutic potential of seropeptase supplements. So instead of relying on supplements, here are eight steps to virtually guarantee that you'll never have a heart attack. We want a whole food diet that can absolutely include natto, and make sure to personalize the diet, but there are some fundamental steps that we want to go through. We want to make sure that it's a high protein diet, specifically lean protein. We want unsaturated fats, such as avocado and extra virgin olive oil, as well as nuts and seeds. Then we want to add in high fiber foods, such as fruit and veg, and cut out the sugary foods, the processed foods, fatty meat, butter and salt. The second step is exercise. We want a mixture of both resistance exercise as well as cardiovascular exercise. Make sure you're a healthy weight, which stems back to diet and exercise. And if you need the extra help, we've got the GLP-1 class of medications to help on your weight loss journey. Number five is stress management. I can't overemphasize how critical meditation and mindfulness is. We need to make sure that your blood sugar levels are low, so if you're already practicing healthy diet habits, exercising regularly, maintaining a healthy weight, then this shouldn't be an issue. But despite all of that, if you're still struggling with your blood sugar levels, make sure to see a doctor. It's a similar story for number seven on the list, which is blood pressure management. Ideally at home when you're sitting down, your blood pressure should be below 120. For people above the age of 60, we often accept a slightly higher blood pressure, around 130, because we need to make sure that people don't get dizzy and fall over. And the final step is cholesterol management. Now some patients, despite having a great diet and regular exercise, will still have high cholesterol levels, in which case we can consider cholesterol lowering medications. So for me personally, I'm targeting an LDL cholesterol level of below 60. So to reach that point, in addition to diet and exercise, I take rosuvastatin 5 milligrams. Now all of that is a very short summary about how to virtually guarantee that you'll never have a heart attack, but I go into way more detail about all of that in the next video here, and a massive thank you to all of the patrons supporting the channel.